What's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see all you guys and girls once again. I know this video is a week late, but due to technical difficulties, I was unable to edit any sort of footage. But we are back, and by we, I mean me, and I have a brand new video for you. So recently, the kind folks over at Perk Coffee sent me something to try out and to give my thoughts on. As most of you would have already figured out from the title of the video, today we'll be unboxing and testing out Timor's Crystal Eye Dripper, and I'll be giving you my first impressions. So what I got in the package were a few bags of coffee, which are part of my usual subscription, as well as the dripper. Right off the bat, I will say that the folds of the box were a little bit finicky to open. There was little to no room to open it normally, so I had to tear it open. What you get in the box is basically a set of 10 filter papers, an instruction booklet in both English and Chinese, a card which I can only assume is an info pack because I can't actually read it, and the dripper itself. This is the Crystal Eye Dripper, which I think is fairly named because, well, it looks like a crystal. I quite like the design as it's pretty elegant and makes for nicer shots when filming. This particular model is a size 01 and is made of plastic. They also produce a glass variant, but personally, I prefer this one as it's lighter and a lot more drop resistant. The design on the inside of the cone consists of multiple straight lines and has ribs for your drinking pleasure. Now these lines aren't just for show. They are part of what Timor calls their three-layer surface design, which is meant to produce consistent and evenly extracted coffee in every cup. This is done by allowing water to run through the coffee more smoothly, while preventing as much water as possible from flowing down the sides of the cone and missing the coffee. This is also meant to prevent clogging and over-extraction while providing optimized water flow. The filter paper it comes with is supposedly meant to fit precisely to the walls of the cone to reduce runoffs. As for the three layers, Timor states that the first layer is the sealed layer, where the filter paper fits perfectly and the water cannot pass through. The second is the water layer, where they recommend we pour and keep the water level in check. The third and the lowest layer is the coffee layer, where 15 to 20 grams of ground coffee should sit. Here, there are fewer ribs but more grooves to mimic a flannel-like extraction. I'm not exactly sure what a flannel-like extraction actually means, but that's what they say on their website. Now, despite being made of plastic, the dripper is definitely fairly sturdy and is a bit heavier than what I'm used to. Also, in order to pick it up after you've brewed a fresh cup of coffee, you have this sort of lip at the top of the cone. And as for the paper, well, it's definitely a lot thinner and smoother than Herio's or other brands in the market, which was quite interesting. Brewing a cup of coffee with this is relatively simple. For this cup, I followed the instructions detailed in the booklet. Start by preheating your cone and rinsing the paper with some hot water. Next, pour in 20 grams of yours or someone else's favourite ground coffee. The booklet didn't specify which, so I went with mine. Tap the dripper to level out the grounds, which is something that many how-to videos fail to do, and pour in about 40 grams of hot water, doing your best to wet all the coffee. They recommend using water that's 85 to 92 degrees Celsius. I personally felt this to be a bit too cool of a temperature, but I'm just following instructions. This is what they call the blobbing phase. After about 30 seconds, continue gently pouring in the rest of your water in small circular motions until a total of 300 grams of water has been added. I'm using a gooseneck kettle here, but any kettle will work just fine as long as you can control the flow of water. Now give everything a swirl, which isn't part of the instructions, and let everything drain down. And there you have a freshly brewed cup of coffee. Now with the pleasantries out of the way, we can get to my opinions, my thoughts, my impressions, everything of that nature. Now the dripper is definitely quite simple to use. If you've used any other drippers such as the V60, Chemex, Origami dripper, things of that sort, you should have no major issues brewing with this particular dripper. 
The weight of the dripper definitely gives it a nice heft and makes it feel a bit sturdier. Also, you're less likely to knock it off the counter by accident. As mentioned earlier, I find that the overall design is definitely elegant and is pretty beautiful. However, it's not without its flaws. Firstly, I wasn't a huge fan of the handleless design. Now, I'm pretty used to brewing with a V60 which has a handle on the side. Now, this makes it a lot easier to pick up because it has a good center of gravity and makes it a bit safer because you're less likely to burn yourself on the side of the cone. The lip on the crystal eye dripper made for a weird fulcrum point and what I found was that it would sort of pivot forward in an awkward position and uh, this was not very ergonomically friendly. Now, the base of the dripper is slightly wider than existing products on the market. This made it a bit difficult to swirl because there's a lot less wiggle room between the edge of your pot and the base itself. The base has a few small slits on the inside of the circle which can help with accidental spillage by letting the water flow back into the cup or pot. However, in practice, I got scalded a few times from steam coming up from those areas which was not very pleasant. I found that the cone itself was a bit wider than your standard size 01. If you're using a gooseneck kettle like me, you may need to lift your arm a bit higher to prevent the uh, spout of the kettle from knocking into the upper edge of the cone. As for the filter paper, now this was sort of an awkward situation. Despite being marketed as precision fit paper, I could not for the life of me get the paper to fit nicely. There were always one or two spots around the cone that would bow which was quite annoying. On the other hand, I actually used a V60 paper on the cone and surprisingly, it actually fit perfectly. Ironically, another issue with the filter paper was a lack of lip. I don't know if it's just my hands, but I found that trying to peel or rub open the paper was a bit difficult and finicky because the paper was smoother than usual. The lack of lip also made removing the paper a bit annoying. Now with the V60, you could just pick up the lip and toss everything away. In this case, you can't because there's no lip. Um, you could try just lifting up the paper, but you would risk burning yourself. Instead, to remove the paper, I found that I had to actually tip everything out, which could get a bit messy. So finally, we've come to the question on everyone's mind. How was the coffee? Well, it was okay-ish. Now it wasn't bad, but it wasn't something I would consider a really good cup of coffee. I found that the recommended brewing methods detailed in the instruction booklet produced a under-extracted cup of coffee. The temperature was just too low, especially for lighter roasts. I tried brewing multiple cups using different beans, different grind settings, and different temperatures. All these had some positive impact on the overall flavor. However, the resulting cups still were on the thinner side of things. I even tried using filter paper from different brands, but the overall change in flavor was negative. I will say that the coffee was clean and definitely not bitter. I tended to bring out the sour notes from whatever beans I used and this was definitely more obvious when it came to lighter roasts. Now this isn't to say that this is a bad dripper. On the contrary, I say that it's a great dripper for people looking to get started with coffee. The coffee it brews is a good starting point for people afraid of the stereotypical harsh, sour, over-extracted, burnt coffee that you find in restaurants, cafes, and establishments such as Coffee Bean or Starbucks. It lets people know that coffee shouldn't be bitter and can help improve the overall appreciation of the basic flavors of good beans. As such, I recommend using darker roast if you're using this brewer. Finally, for those of you who enjoy the texture of cold brew, unlike me, but want a warm cup of coffee, then the Crystal Eye Dripper can definitely give you what you are looking for. Also, many of you would have already noticed the similarities between the Hario V60 and this particular dripper. I'll be comparing the two in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to hit that like button if you liked the video, share it with all your friends and family, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, drop me a comment because that helps with the YouTube algorithm. If the Crystal Eye Dripper is something up your alley, I'll leave a link in the description so you can find it. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.